right, thanks Axel and uh, Dr. Ilson for the invitation to speak. So I'm gonna be arguing the counterpoint, which is that surgery is not required after chemoradiation for squamous cell of the esophagus. I have no disclosures. Uh, so we're gonna review the rationale for definitive chemoradiation with selective esophagectomy for patients who have residual or recurrent local disease. We're gonna highlight the randomized trials which specifically show no survival benefit for the addition of surgery after chemoradiation. And then we're gonna discuss recent data showing the viability of salvage esophagectomy as an option for patients who have planned definitive treatment and then develop recurrence. Uh, so the rationale, we know that squamous cell cancer of the esophagus, there's a high rate of response to chemoradiation for low volume early stage disease uh, from Japanese prospective studies. Almost 90% of patients will have a complete clinical response. We know from the CROSS trial in which 41.4 gray of radiation with weekly carboplatin and paclitaxel were administered for locally advanced patients. Approximately half have a complete pathologic response. Esophagectomy for squamous cell cancers in the mid to upper esophagus carries a significant risk of morbidity and mortality, much higher so than a surgery for a distal esophagus adenocarcinoma. If you look at prospective studies, the mortality rate is around 10%, which is not trivial. And for tumors that are in the upper esophagus or in the cervical location, this may require a total laryngectomy, which has significant implications for the patient from a morbidity standpoint. And clearly we know that definitive chemoradiation with organ preservation and selective salvage surgery really is a standard of care for essentially all other locally advanced squamous cell cancers that we treat at other sites in the body, including the head and neck, the lung, the cervix, and the anus. So what do the randomized trials show? Uh, the two main studies that address this question are a German trial and a French trial. This is a German trial, 172 patients with mid to upper esophageal squamous cell cancer, locally advanced but operable. Patients were randomized to receive either induction chemotherapy, chemoradiation, and then planned surgery, or induction chemotherapy followed by definitive chemoradiation. There was no significant difference in survival between the two approaches. If you look at the curves, you're tempted to say that outcomes are better in the chemoradiation followed by surgery, but I'll draw your attention to the 95% confidence intervals, which clearly overlap one. And the number of patients available out at five years is very small. Similar findings for the pro protocol analysis. Treatment-related mortality was substantial in the patients who underwent surgery after chemoradiation. It was 13% in this trial. And this basically eroded the benefits that were seen in local, uh, freedom from local recurrence by the addition of surgery. So on the basis of this randomized trial, the authors conclude that adding surgery after chemoradiation improves local tumor control but does not increase survival for patients with locally advanced squamous cell cancer. The second study from France, this is a much larger, larger study, uh, over 400 patients with locally advanced operable squamous cell cancer. All patients received chemoradiation and then they were assessed and patients who had a response were randomized to either esophagectomy or some additional boost radiation with chemotherapy. These are the survival curves for the intent to treat analysis. As you see, there's no benefit to planned esophagectomy after chemoradiation. I'll let you look at the slide for a little bit longer and take into consideration when you vote. <laughs> this is the per protocol analysis. So again, these are the strongest data that we have to address this question. Uh, again, we see a substantial rate of mortality within three months in the patients who undergo surgery. I think in clinic, we've all seen patients like this, patients who have chemoradiation, have a great response, go to surgery, have a path cr and then die of post-operative complications. Uh, you can see hospitalization was significantly longer in the patients who underwent surgery. Importantly, two-year overall recurrence was not significantly different between the two arms. So although there was an improvement in local recurrence in the patients who had a surgery, Basically, there was a shift in the patterns of recurrence with more patients having distant recurrence 
uh, in the, uh, the patients who underwent surgery. So overall, no difference in recurrence rates between the strategies. Uh, so again, from this randomized phase three trial, uh, the authors conclude that for locally advanced esophageal tumors, especially squamous cell cancers, who respond to chemoradiation, there's no benefit for the routine addition of surgery. We looked at contemporary patients at our institution with squamous cell cancer treated with either planned trimodality or planned bimodality therapy, recognizing these are small numbers. Uh, in Mayo Clinic in Rochester, we see very few patients with squamous cell cancer of the esophagus. About 90% of our patients are adenocarcinoma. Um, so this is a minority of the patients that we see, but uh, in our care, we saw no difference in patients treated with trimodality versus bimodality. And I'll point out a difference between these data and the data um, that Elena presented. Hers included all comers, both adeno and squamous cell cancer. So that difference in survival that they saw was likely related to the adenocarcinoma population driving that benefit. What about salvage esophagectomy? Uh, historically, there's been nihilism regarding the role of a salvage surgery for patients with esophagus cancer who have persistent or recurrent disease. Uh, it was thought that outcomes for this patient cohort was poor. Uh, the morbidity and mortality of a salvage surgery was very high. Uh, the highest quality data that we have from this contemporary multi-center uh, series from France published just a few years ago in uh, the Journal of Clinical Oncology looked at over 300 patients treated over a contemporary uh, time period. They matched them to patients who underwent planned trimodality therapy. And although you'll see that the rates of anastomotic leak and infection were modestly higher in the patients who had salvage surgery versus planned trimodality therapy, there was no difference in overall mortality and morbidity in the patients who underwent a salvage surgery compared to planned trimodality therapy. Interestingly, they noted that the risk of morbidity and mortality was highest in patients who were treated at a low volume surgical center, which again, I think supports that if a patient is to undergo an esophagectomy in general, and especially in the salvage setting, they should be referred to high volume tertiary care centers. Interestingly, they also found that patients who received high dose radiation had a higher risk of morbidity and mortality after salvage operation. And importantly, when they performed a matched cohort of patients undergoing planned trimodality versus salvage surgery, you can see there's no difference in survival. Um, so this really shoots down the old belief that a salvage surgery is inferior to planned surgery. Many of our surgeons that we work with still have this belief that, well, it's now or never after chemoradiation, but I think the modern data in uh, these cohorts show that that's definitely not the case. So in conclusion, I would argue that definitive chemoradiation with organ preservation and selective esophagectomy only for patients with residual or recurrent local disease is the preferred approach for most patients with esophageal cancer. However, I do acknowledge there are some subsets of patients with squamous cell cancer in whom trimodality or planned esophagectomy may be a reasonable option. And these are specifically patients that have a more favorable risk-benefit ratio of surgery, such as those who are younger with good performance status, and especially for the uncommon patient who has a mid or distal squamous cell cancer of the esophagus for whom we know that the operative risk is going to be much lower. And then finally, surgery for these patients should be performed at a high volume center. Thank you.